Hello everyone, it's DuckFerden07. Today we are playing a very cool new brew I'm very excited about. And uh, I just brewed this today, played two leagues with it, and it felt uh, like really good, uh, powerful, uh, and very fun to play. There are just a lot of, lot of synergies here that are like really uh, what... Uh, I wanted really to do something like this for a long time and there are just really cool synergies here so a lot of you know about this synergy between Death Shadow and Wattles the Scar Drift okay so this guy says every creature card in your graveyard has scavenge and has also ability to sacrifice another creature for regeneration and this make him a really uh, good uh, uh, holder of uh, these uh, scavenge counters okay we also have agatha uh, this is also agatha deck so putting counters for just one mana on your uh, creatures is very good because you get to use the agatha abilities okay so a lot of lot of synergies here uh, we uh, so varos can you for one mana exile the death shadow uh, from your graveyard and put 13 counters on any creature you want uh, in most often this is uh, varos itself because uh, uh, this guy has a regeneration, so it's safer to put it on him. Uh, one of Walking Ballista in this deck, and four Invasions of Ikoria. So, uh, in a lot of situations, when you need Ballista for, uh, Ballista for your Akata, you can play Invasion just for two mana and get uh, Walking Ballista on the field. Another uh, zero mana uh, target in this deck is Dryad Arbor. And yeah, so there is some tech there, definitely. Okay, so uh, this should actually be, I had uh, two wins of heat. Yeah, this should be a heat. This should be also another heat. Um, I uh, forgot about that. And, um, uh, but yeah, I, I think it is better so I have more access to green with Dryad Arbor and Forest. Okay, so Lotlet Troll. This card is really good with Agatha too and also fits this deck very well. This can be really large threat. Uh, the key here is having a trample. So you can sometimes put counters on Lotted on a troll to uh, because he has trample putting counters from the death shadow on it is very good. Also it can be very large just by discarding stuff from your hand. Uh, often the game strategy will be discard everything on a uh, troll. And just try to do the beat down with it, and then play Agatha and give uh, give him some abilities uh, like Grace or whatever. And yes, yeah, so two block dusts uh, in the list. Uh, so uh, they're pretty. Uh, there is no space to play uh, more of them, uh, in my opinion. And these two, I have been very satisfied with just two. I don't really want more than two. So sometimes you get to use them with trolls, sometimes you mill them over with Stitcher Supplier, sometimes you just have to hard cast them, but uh, having them as a sack fodder for the Varos has been useful. Having additional free uh, creature uh, in the field can be good when trying to pressure your opponent. And yeah, that's it. So uh, Delighted Halfling, only non-black creature uh, in this build. I uh, initially started this build as Ayara deck. Uh, you know what is Ayara? It is this card. Okay, so uh, it says whenever another black creature enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. It can tap to sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. So I started this build as Ayara deck and then completely ditched her from the build. It was a bit too slow, and the Varl's uh, Death Shadow interaction was like the most important for the deck, and I added some invasions of Ikoria as I think like best tutors for this option. Also one Vampire Hex Mage in this build as an invasion of Ikoria target, but also it's just very useful having it in Agatha Cauldron deck because now every creature you have can have this Hex Mage ability, which means like you get to kill all the plants walkers or remove counters from the ring in response to opponent uh, tap the ring to draw cards. So if you remove all the counters, they draw zero cards because they draw equal to the number of counters. Okay, so it is also can be a accidental ring hate, but you already have the Bowmasters there, so uh, have multiple ways to fight it. And yes, yeah, so Agadim Awakening, 
this card has been very good in attack it's another way to get your life total low to play the shadow but playing shadow is not really the most important thing in this deck often you just want it in your graveyard anyway to use it on varals immediately so uh yeah uh, Agarim is awakening. I used it multiple times to get creatures from my graveyard. You can get Dryad Arbor, uh, Shadow, and Bow Masters for just five mana. So that happens really often. And okay, so that's basically it. Stitcher Supplier is there. Uh, it's very good with Agatha uh, Soul Cauldron. You can often go turn one Supplier, turn two Agatha Cauldron, and immediately make uh, Supplier a Grist or whatever like. Uh, there's a lot of cool interaction here. Okay, so on the sideboard, and not some more sweet Agatha interaction like Fulminator Mage is great. In this build, completely removes all your all your worries about uh, uh, Tron decks when you draw it. Uh, Havar Might uh, is, I think, uh, like Karn is a big enemy of this deck because it completely shuts off Ballista and Agatha Soul Caldron. Also, Havar Might from the side. That's why I also have additional artifact enchantment hate, additional uh, land hate. Uh, there are also endurances here, uh, two toss scissors and three dismember as a only removal, except of course for the Grist and Bowmaster and the Ballista in the main. Okay, so that's it. And now let's go to the gameplay and see how the games went and how the games felt. Okay, so uh, game one starting first with a decent hand, uh, starting with the supplier here, milling uh, bowmasters and a halfling. Opponent starts off with the grief scam, uh, takes both of my invasions of Ikoria. So I get to play. Uh, I get to play the vampire hex mage. I decide to take a basic. Because yeah, opponents uh, yeah they're again playing blood moons in the main, so I decided to just take the basic, and not worry about it. Uh, okay, I also accidentally uh, set the wrong fetch. I should have kept the catacombs in hand, and opponent plays doughty and goes for attack. So we trade for the grief, and that's one big worry less for me, because yeah, unfortunately maybe I should have played. Uh, the shock last turn, so I will be able to jam the shadow immediately. But yeah, here my opponent probably forgets I uh, troll can regenerate. So I get the free kill on the Ragavan, and opponent connects for 3 damage. And now I play a shadow and troll and start attacking uh, my opponent. Yeah, so uh, they go for fable, and now it's a race. So I have a big shadow here, already 6-6, six, six. I have uh, two trolls and uh, decide to stay back with one troll, holding this mana for regenerate and use my Agatha immediately to put a uh, counter on troll because it may be relevant for uh, the race. And now opponent uh, plays their Ragavan basically as a jumper for my uh, shadow and connects for another 3 damage with Doughty. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I think this was unnecessary risk. At this point, I went for all my uh, yeah, and I did uh, the I did, uh, the Agatha ability. I, I don't know if Agatha ability was wrong, but I should have probably just stayed with the troll back and yeah, uh, just played safe. I risked everything, went for the attacks because they, they have a lot of draws that were lethal like bowmasters bolt and uh, i don't know uh, some other stuff like removal uh, tapping my uh, troll and connecting again so a lot of stuff there uh, and for the lethal so i decided to go everything in but it wasn't a good decision i think in retrospective it feels very bad uh, but i won the next two matches so it was fine Okay, so again, this is like why I play uh, the supplier here. It's a very good enabler for the deck, enabling me in this situation uh, to play supplier on turn one and have shadow and grist in my graveyard immediately. 
I go for my overground tomb, I play Agatha, and uh, I uh, decide to use ability immediately. So uh, my opponent has to use uh, removal on my stitcher supplier, and I still get to exile the grist. So I don't really care that much about my ability not resolving. My grist, grist is exiled, and it's just a matter of time when I'll get the ability there. So I go uh, for another Grist from hand, create the Insect token, go again for a Gata ability, and uh, they are again forced to use removal on my token. Opponent uh, Pitch Cast Fury to get rid of my Grist, but yeah, it's a pretty, pretty bad situation for the opponent. Uh, I go for a Ballista here. Immediately, I don't need to use a gata right now, so I can use the ability immediately. And uh, end of turn, I put counter on my insect token. And now I get to use the waddles, exile, uh, <clears throat> exile a shadow from my graveyard, exile another shadow from graveyard, Make both of my creatures 15-15 and uh, yeah, attack for lethal, so I don't have to use the ping ability 15 times, that's it. Okay, so let's check out the last game. Okay, so opponent starting off with the Ragavan and me keeping a very risky one lander. On the draw, but yeah, hand was like really that good, and one uh, one uh, land basically make it almost unbeatable. Uh, Cauldron, uh, Bowmaster, Troll also have the Halfling there, all just very good cards in the matchup. Opponent uh, plays a Fury Scam, connects with Ragawan, which uh, obviously puts them in a very good position. And I get the land I wanted, which means I was able to go for the Bowmaster, uh, kill the Ragawan, and I had option to jump the Fury. But I decided not to do this. Uh, just go for uh, Agatha here. Try to create, try to make my uh, uh, Bowmaster a uh, Grist. Uh, they kill it in response, but I get to create a token with my other token. So I was in a pretty good situation here. I had to jump now with my insect, but this was fine. I had now multiple options on my untap. And yeah, okay, so uh, now you can see just how good Lotla Troll can be in this deck. I uh, immediately make him a Ballista plus Grist, make a token, get six counters on Troll and kill both Fury and the Bowmaster, uh, ping them uh, with... Uh, Ping them with Ballista abilities, and yeah, that's it. Opponent, uh, I used uh, Agatha on their graveyard, so they can't exile a mine response to get a counter on Troll and uh, again get the abilities from the Crest going, and opponent concedes that was the game. Okay, so that was match one against Camp. So let's check out another one. Okay, so mediocre hand. I have uh, don't have uh, my classic two drop. I don't have a one drop, but I have two grists, and that was a reason enough to keep it. Okay, so now I find the stitcher supplier, which was decent, and I shock uh, the Agadim Awakening in there to be able to play uh, that shadow next turn. Opponent goes for Tatsis plus Ragavan. And I resolve my Grist, creating another Ragavan blocker. Yeah, and unfortunately, I didn't go for uh, a lot of these uh, lists to play Blood Moon in the main right now. And I uh, didn't go for a basic in this uh, game one, so I wasn't able to cast my shadows. My shadows would be very good here. But yeah, I was. Uh, this deck plays a lot of creatures and a lot of ways to put creatures in the, in the yard. And yeah, this means like Grist can be very good here. And uh, so I went, uh, I had nine creatures in the yard at this moment. 
and this continue creating those uh, insect tokens and now I was able to just deal 10 damage with Grist and that was the game okay so let's check out the game too another scam matchup another win against scam a lot of uh, okay so let's yeah let's check out my sideboarding plan against Cam. this is very important for this match so bloodgust out because they have doubties uh, one low troll out uh, and uh, that's basically it yeah I needed I really want my uh, dismembers and but that's basically all I want and I just uh, remove two uh, bloodgusts and one low troll out and that is it okay so I didn't, don't really want uh, any of the other cards maybe if they play a Kroxa maybe like 1-2 Endurance I have no idea what my opponent was trying to do here maybe they wanted to go Engineer Explosives for 0 then kill tokens probably but they didn't do that yeah so uh, I went for uh, my Zilrota on turn 4 and after that opponent concedes that was another win against Cam. so let's check out the next one okay we'll watch the wins first and then defeat in the end okay so uh, uh, really I kept I decided to keep here a pretty bad hand so this is basically a uh, 5 lands and ballista and invasion so really really poor hand i decided this was uh, among my first leagues with a deck and i decided to keep it so uh i got the bloodgust from top which wasn't like the best top deck but it it is something opponent goes double expedition map and I go like Dread Arbor and Ballista. Maybe this was a bad decision since my opponent actually killed the Dread Arbor with this member. Yeah, I probably could have gone for another land there to secure casting of Ikoria uh, on turn 4. This way I cast uh, Grist, which is fine, but it's not really a big clock. Uh, it would be uh, uh, it would be same thing basically since they went for the one ring anyway and my damage would be prevented here so it wouldn't matter much and i went for ikoria here finding the hex mage this way i can uh, end step uh, make uh, bring back my zilrota opponent is now on 13 life and uh, getting one damage in the upkeep so pretty close to lethal but opponent has the oblivion stone to clear my entire board which puts me in a yeah, pretty bad situation i just play my stuff regularly to force them uh, to use uh, the oblivion stone and yeah they went for it killed everything i got unfortunately and I had I was hoping for land here to play a, a awakening for two. Didn't get it, but I play my low troll again and the halfling. Opponent uh, getting two more damage in the upkeep, which means my block that uh, has haste now, which can be relevant. But yeah, opponent had the ulamog there. Uh, <clears throat> exiling both of my creatures removing any chances I had of winning here and uh, yeah so uh, I went for awakening there uh, didn't have any one drops in the yard so I bring back Dread Arbor and the lol troll uh, Dread Arbor gets uh, the bloodcast back opponent has two removals to connect with Ulamog and finish the game immediately that was the game so let's check out the next one obviously have my uh, fulminators i really want the fulminators in this matchup i bought in a havar might and i this time i decided not to use the force of figure i think next time when i played against a hammer uh, when i was on the draw i decided to uh, use force of figures too 
But these decks often play like a relic of progenitors in the main, and I decide to remove the block gusts. I really don't want to hard cast the block gusts or draw them. Uh, so I went for the Varols here and attack with the Bowmasters. And I have Shadow in hand. And yeah, so I just play the Shadow, put for one mana, put 13 counters on Varols, uh, put a regeneration shield on Varols, and uh, yeah, do the little damage on turn 4. Uh, I did this on turn 3 in a lot of situations, similar situation to this one. When I had Delight of Halfling, of course. Okay, so let's check out a very fast game. Let's check out the final one. Okay, in the game three, uh, they started first with the expedition map, classic start. I, I had the mediocre hand, but I top deck Fulminator from the top, which makes hand much, much better. Okay, so I should have waited for um, them to use the expedition map and just use the fulminator on the upkeep. That was not a good decision. But yeah, I'm kind of um, too lazy to wait. And I did this immediately, so they find another Urza Tower. I don't know, this game was so weird. I really didn't understand what my opponent was doing. I went for uh, I went for troll there, uh, keeping mana for the bowmasters. Opponent uh, cracks the expedition map and finds another power plant. This was so weird. Uh, at this point, my uh, reasoning was uh, they had another uh, they had third strong piece in hand and they don't want me to kill it with fulminator or whatever. That was my reasoning uh, at this moment, but uh, yeah, I just uh, create another Grist token, play the Dread Arbor, and the opponent pass the turn, opponent concedes with 7 cards in hand, I had no idea what was happening there, yeah, but that was it. In case they went for uh, the mass removal, this time I had a Vacaning again, I was saving it for a situation like that, uh, it didn't happen, but yeah, okay, so... That was a win against Tron, and let's now check out the match for the final win of this league. Uh, yeah, this is this type of hands is pretty good, especially if I can get uh, Cauldron. Also, mill uh, my Death Shadow, which is very good mill in a lot of situations. If you find Waddles. It's very nice to have a shadow in the yard. Opponent starts uh, with Hadron Crab. I think uh, I think this mill matchup felt like really really good wherever I was playing it. Uh, I went for turn two Ballista and Varolos is just extremely strong in this mill matchup. Uh, it gets. Uh, because of the halfling, it's often uncounterable, and uh, it has uh, regenerate, which uh, mill basically can't beat. And uh, because I always have multiple creatures on the field, so you can kill really the varals. And uh, when you have death shadows in the yard, you just can really finish fast. Okay, on the upkeep, I decide to use the bowmasters. And the Ballista immediately to get rid of the crap. They have Fatal Push, but no Terror Land at this point. So I play my uh, Lol Troll. Attack with two of my other creatures. And yeah, uh, it is definitely a race because we are both stuck on two lands. Opponent finds their third land, goes for Tasha, exiles 15 cards. Pretty good, and I also find uh, my land at the same time and play my Varals, bring back the Bloodgust, and now I have a Death Shadow in the yard, which means um, uh, next turn I definitely have a 
definitely have a uh, lethal, uh, so they have to play like ensnaring bridge or something like that. Because I can give Varos uh, regenerate multiple times, it's very very hard for them to get rid of it, and they play Baleful Mastery. Uh, and yeah, uh, so now I have multiple shadows in the yard. They have only one blue open, and it's definitely a GG. So I remove one shadow, put counter some army, another shadow for counter some barrels, and opponent concedes that is the game. So let's check out the game too. Okay, in the game 2, opponent had very very brutal hand. I had a decent hand but no creatures unfortunately. I always go for to immediately fetch against um, a mill. I think it's always best to fetch as early as possible. So that means a lower chance of them drawing into trap. And but opponent had a double trap, which is like very good start. I'm already on 25 uh, cards in the library. Uh, I go for uh, invasion of Vicoria, finding me Dread Arbor to get my lands because I was really struggling. Uh, my hand was weird, and I didn't have enough uh, pressure. No creatures at the moment. Okay, so. I start the turn with the Totsies here and opponent uh, plays the counter, uh, sorry, plays the Drowning Lock, uh, counters my Totsies so I go for uh, Agatha here, exiling the Hex Mage and sacking the Arbor to get my Cory on the field, this is the fastest, uh, fastest clock I can put on the field, basically two turn to turn win and I have only five cards in my library but opponent is really low on uh, cards which gives me some chance and uh, yeah they go for a bridge uh, but that is not a big problem because I have a Havermite in my graveyard so I just play my land, uh, find the land from the turn was pretty good I get my uh, blood gas back and then uh, exile the Havermite, of course. Uh, use the Havermite to kill the bridge. And uh, yeah, played my Ballista, attack for uh, uh, 8 damage and uh, present lethal for the next turn. My opponent didn't have a kill last turn, which means they have to top deck, top deck right now to get a kill. And they do top deck, uh, they get a crab I think, yeah. They have a crab and it was holding a land in their hand and that was it. Yeah. Okay, let's check out the game 3. Pretty close a loss in that game too, but yeah. Uh, opponent top decks uh, crab for the win. Okay, let's check out my sideboarding plan for this match. Okay, Bowmasters out, they are really... Opponent plays Visions of Beyond, but probably boarded out a couple of those. So Bowmasters is mostly just very useless. Uh, I really don't want to mill myself, so Stitcher Suppliers also out. Two Grist uh, out for the same reason. I have this member, I'd rather have these members than the Grists. Also Totsies can be useful. Uh, I was struggling with lands here, uh, but I decided to go for a Troll. On turn 2, uh, somehow my turn 1 Dread Arbor survived, that was like amazing. It was definitely a risky keep, but I had the endurance, so I thought like I, I can probably miss a, a land drop for a turn or two with the endurance in hand. Okay, so now. Uh, again, a missing a land didn't have much, but I did have a Totsies, so I go for it, exile, discard a Soul Guide Lantern, play the Haywire Might, and see my opponent hand, which uh, was just two Visions of Beyond and one Tail's End, and they were also uh, struggling with uh, just two lands. Uh, 
uh, had a tail's end uh, in the hand, which can be a bit awkward. Uh, good against my Korea, good against Fetch, good against a lot of stuff at the moment. I finally find my uh, third land I was looking for and uh, played Varos. Varos is, as you already saw, pretty good against them. Uh, they are going to mill something eventually. And uh, yeah, they will have to really aggressively use this Soul Guide Lantern for me to get no value with Varos and the Shadow. My opponent decides to use Soul Guide Lantern immediately. And I'm like in a really good situation right now. Basically, no hurry to do anything. I just play my spells and hold uh, the endurance. Okay, I go for uh, one of my invasions, uh, trying to find uh, that shadow. Yeah, that shadow is very good because I can just uh, sack it with Varols immediately and put 13 counters on uh, my creature. Uh, they use their tail's end, but this was fine because I had another invasion in my hand, so I was really okay with them uh, using that tail's end from their hand. Okay, uh, another land to mill more cards. Now I get the shadow in the yard, which is great for my varals, obviously. Unfortunately, you can't scavenge uh, instant speed, only sorcery speed. But still, uh, it's a pretty good ability with the shadow. And with endurance in hand. And I also got a second endurance, a bit of overkill. But still good. Opponent has another tail's end to prevent me from scavenging the shadow. And so I find another shadow mm -hmm. with another invasion. So I can do this thing again uh, next turn. And also still have mana to uh, hard cast my endurance. Yeah, so basically, this is uh, this game is unbeatable for me. Uh, with this type of hand, opponent has another uh, land to destroy my land, but it really doesn't matter much at this point. They only have visions, one vision of beyond in their hand at the moment. So I go for it, obviously, uh, just sack the shadow, put 13 counters there, uh, force my opponent into blocking uh, Varals, so they don't uh, get to use the Ruin Crab ability next turn, and only one vision so beyond means they, can, they really must have top deck very well to get anything out of this game. And uh, yeah, they didn't get it, and that's it. That is the match. Okay, so uh, that is the last win of the league. We will now watch the defeat. I think defeat was also against uh, Tron deck, if I remember well. I kept, also kept a one lander, which was definitely risky. Sorry, ah, oh, sorry, it wasn't. Yeah, this was a Yagmoth uh, deck, and the, uh, the Yagmoth matchup is uh, pretty weird. Basically, often it can be whoever uh, draws their uh, Agatha first is in a huge advantage. Uh, I went for Grist here. I still think this was best, but I was really expecting the Bowmasters and hoping for my opponent to not have the second Bowmaster to kill my Grist. This way, uh, my Grist survives on one. I can plus him on my turn, play my Bowmasters to kill theirs, and pretty, it's like a pretty decent situation. Yeah, uh, but now it is hard. It's definitely hard for me to uh... yeah, This was a bad decision. I should have. Uh should have targeted my opponent's face. I would have one more orc token on the field right now. Yeah, so I wouldn't uh, be forced to... Uh, I wanted to hold this Bowmasters and not to cast it right now. So I went for uh, Invasion of Ikoria 
uh, getting another halfling not able to play the boma uh, shadow at the moment because i didn't have uh, another shockland unfortunately this was a big deal and the opponent had another yak uh, and then uh, finds another young wolf which uh, which yeah basically i can't win through this anymore so that is the game I really need to have my uh, Varol's Shadow thing early and yeah, the big, big, large creatures are good against Yag, but uh, also Cauldron is good against Yag, so you need to, I need to have my Cauldron but unfortunately it was the other way around, I cast my Lotro and the opponent had the Cauldron and before I find a solution for this, opponent already did a lot of stuff with their cauldron and yeah they also play Havermite in main you can see my uh, sideboard plan for this match I was thinking about including the Havermite for Agatha cauldron but yeah, I play I play more cauldrons than them. I have four in my deck, and I was on the play, so I decided just to try to draw uh, my Agatha first. And but I sh I probably should have uh, included one at least one Havar might. Yeah. So Bloodgusts out, two Stitcher suppliers out, one Lol Troll and one Varls. I had a lot of cards I wanted to bring in, like Dismember and Endurance. I think both of these cards are pretty good against them. But yeah, this was this was a losing game. Opponent finds the Haver Might to kill my Agatha. And uh, they had their own with multiple creatures already exiled. Below, they also find the Yagmoth, and yeah, that's it. Um, uh, Yagmoth definitely feels like a hard matchup when they have uh, their Agatha first. If I had my Agatha resolved first, it would probably be completely different. And also, I think I should have maybe uh, boarded in one Hivar Might for that matchup too. And uh, that's it. So I was really, as I said, really excited about uh, this new brew uh, that is very playable. Uh, doing very well with a lot of uh, cool interactions. Agatha gives this archetype a huge new dimension and uh, so many new uses for the lol troll. This is like a faint favorite card, uh, which was uh, played uh, a lot in the modern before and for a bit forgotten lately. But this guy has like two pretty decent abilities and. Uh, uh, giving all your creatures regenerate and pumping them for, for plus one counters uh, it's pretty good but also in one of the games you can see how uh, it can be good with uh, when you have ballista exile with soul cauldron uh, you can make him uh, always most situations since this deck plays only creatures you can make him very big and uh, uh, just use this uh, uh, ballista ability is very good or or make a large creature in the early turns to pressure the opponent and that's it a supplier turn one into turn two agatha soul cauldron has been amazing i really like that uh shadow is not something you really uh i rarely just cast this i mostly just want this in my graveyard to do the scavenge with the bottles and then having uh 13 counters on this uh creature with the uh, regenerate uh, available it's very good also um Varos is very useful to uh, exile with uh, agatha and hex mage 2 and lol troll 2 halfling grist of course all these creatures and one of ballista which we can find with our invasion invasion is also uh, pretty good uh, when we're trying to close the game uh, the yeah, zilrota is very good at it as you may already know and that's it okay so i think this is my final list at the moment i really like the gameplay of this list it has some really uh, explosive turns it feels like you just 
can't do anything to prevent uh, to prevent uh, it from winning and uh, it's uh, at times it just feels uh, like it has all those options available to you and you have multiple ways to victory and it's really hard for opponent to interact uh, through Agatha and through Varol's the regenerate abilities uh, especially for these decks that don't play exile effects and uh, that's it okay so um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, this brew that I was very as I already said very excited about it was very fun for me to play this today um, I think uh, I think it's one of my dearest brews so far from the Eldrain and uh, I just wanted to say uh, uh, remind you that you click like, click subscribe, uh, comment in the video. Uh, I'm really, really, really interested to see about your game experience with this list. Uh, uh, you saw what I was trying before, Ayara. Also, I was thinking about uh, more bloodgusts, but I think like two were like what where I wanted to be. I also was thinking about Vengevines. Do I play Vengevine here? Or do I don't play it. Uh, I, I'm still not 100% sure, but I really like the list the way it is right now. Ayara was a pretty sweet addition to deck, but uh, kind of too slow. I was thinking about uh, maybe playing one-off, but uh, in the end I decided to ditch all of those. But still kind of, it is very, very sweet uh, creature, but it is 3 mana, uh, 3 black mana for a 2-3 creature that doesn't do anything uh, when it enters, just pings for one. So it didn't feel good enough and uh, yeah, in the end it uh, it was removed. Okay, so uh, that is it for today. Again, thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.